very good morning to all of you. Myself, uh, Dr. Sunny Malde. I am going to present uh, my thesis topic about the studies of categories of albinuria and its correlates in the diabetic kidney disease. So coming to the introduction, diabetes mellitus is a metabolic disease with a rising prevalence worldwide causing multi-system damage. The prevalence of the macro and the microvascular complications such as diabetic nephropathy which occurs around 20 to 40 percent of type 2 diabetes patient has risen worldwide. The classical phenotype of diabetic nephropathy is described as the linear progression from normal albinuria to microalbinuria to macroalbinuria and eventually ending in the end stage renal disease. So the recent studies have shown the possibilities of decline in the GFR without the presence of significant proteinuria which is a USCR ratio of more than 300 milligram per gram is known as a non-proteinuric phenotype of diabetic nephropathy. This is uh, albinuric, albinuria and diabetic kidney disease is divided into three categories based on the spot urine and it's finding its uh, urinary albumin creatinine uh, levels. So the three categories are normal albinuria which is less than 30 milligram per uh, gram which is uh, A1 category. Microalbinuria is 30 to 300 and macroalbinuria is more than 300 which is A3. So the proposed mechanism of correlates of non-proliferative diabetic nephropathy as it is very much important these days. So the mechanisms are this uh, various factors such as age related sclerotic changes in the glomeruli, interstitial fibrosis and ischemia, microangiopathic changes are more than the microangiopathic changes and enhanced vascular resistance in renal interlobular arteries which can be assessed by the renal resistive index. Atherosclerosis is enhanced in patients having NPDN, ankle brachial pressure index can be used as a surrogate marker for detecting atherosclerotic changes. And hyperuricemia and inflammatory markers such as TNF alpha, TGF beta, VEGF, IKM, VKM, these are the factors which may act through the apoptosis and vascular inflammations. So this is the uh, pathogenesis of diabetic kidney disease. Basically in diabetes mellitus, there are various metabolic factors and hemodynamic factors. These both factors play a role together and they're causing the activations of the intracellular signaling pathways, oxidative stress, dysregulated autophagy, and epigenetic changes, which uh, leads to the inflammation and fi fibrosis leading up to the diabetic kidney disease. So our uh, research question was, what is the proportion of categories of albinuria like A1, A2, A3 in patients with diabetic kidney disease? And what, are the, what is the correlation of renal resistivity index, ankle brachial pressure index, and serum uric acid with the categories of albinuria in patients of diabetic kidney disease? So the aim of the study was to determine the categories of albinuria in diabetic kidney disease and to correlate these uh, categories of albinuria with various uh, factors such as renal resistivity index, ankle brachial pressure index, and serum uric acid. And the objectives were to see the proportion of the categories of albinuria in the patients among the uh, diabetic kidney disease to measure the serum uric acid, ankle brachial pressure index, and renal resistivity index, and to see its correlation with the various categories of uh, albinuria in patients of diabetic kidney disease. So these are the various review literature. Uh, there are four literature which I have taken which showing the various factors like renal resistivity index, uric acid and ankle brachial pressure index and its relation to the diabetic kidney disease. So the type of study was a cross-sectional study and it was studied at the Department of Medicine at Eras Lucknow Medical College, Lucknow and the duration of study of, was of 24 months and all the IPD and OPD patients of uh, Department of Medicine were diagnosed as a type 2 diabetes mellitus with, with diabetic nephropathy as per the criteria of JNC were taken and sample size was 148. Uh, exclusion criteria we have taken the uh, excluded the patient such as the kidney disease from the other cause from the diabetic nephropathy such as obstructive uropathy, UTI, polycystic disease, renal artery stenosis, hematuria, malignancy, sepsis and patient consuming uric acid lowering drugs, pregnancy and critical ill patients. So this is the classic uh, table showing the classification of uh, classical diabetic nephropathy. On the extreme left hand side we have the various stages of the nephropathy. From stage one to stage five, 
which is stage one is pre-nephropathy. And when we do the USCR ratio, it comes out to be the normal albinuria of less than 30 and EGFR tends to be more than or equal to 30. Similarly, microalbinuria, which is an incipient nephropathy, overt nephropathy, which is a macroalbinuria or persistent uh, proteinuria, and kidney failure is the stage four of CKD, which in the urinary albuminuria ratio, it can be any state of albinuria or protein status, and the EGFR levels are less than 30. So this is the flow chart of the study. Initially, we took the patients presenting in the medicine OPD with the type two diabetes mellitus, Screening for the inclusion and the exclusion criteria was done, history and examination and urine and blood samples were taken, renal doppler was performed and EGFR was calculated based on the Cockroft girls formula and based on it we have divided into three categories of USCR of less than 30, USCR of 30 to 300 and USCR of more than 300. And after it, we have it, uh, we have correlated it with uh, various parameters such as serum uric acid, renal resistivity index, and ankle breaker pressure index with uh, categories of albinuria. So results are, first is the categories of albinuria. We, according to 140, from the 148 sample size, we have found that uh, around 48% of patient had microalbinuria. And the second most common was 32% patient had normal albinuria with 20% having a macroalbinuria. So this is the graph showing the, uh, we have taken various comorbidities and correlating it with the various categories of albinuria. So A1 category, which is a normal albinuria, we have seen that type two diabetes mellitus and uh, cardiovascular uh, diseases were most common around 62.5% in patients of uh, normal albinuria. And in uh, microalbinuria, type 2 diabetes mellitus and hypertension was most common. And all the risk factors on A3 category, type 2 diabetes mellitus, hypertension and CVD were around 35.3%. So uh, we have, after uh, categorizing the patient, we have uh, uh, taken various parameters such as uric acid, HbA1c, SBP, renal uh, diastolic blood pressure, renal resistivity index, and ankle brachial pressure index. And based on it, we have uh, correlated it with uh, various categorical group. So in A1 category, which is a normal albinuria group, we have found a very significant uh, finding that uh, in the early stages of diabetic kidney disease, renal resistivity index and ankle brachial pressure index and uric acid was statistically significant. And in coming to the A2 category, we have uh, also found that USCR, uric acid, RRI, and ABPI, it is statistically significant. But it was very strange that we found it in normal albinuria. And this is the, we have also uh, uh, done the fundus examination in uh, these patients. And it had shown that uh, around 42.5% of uh, patients in normal albinuria group doesn't have any kind of uh, retinopathy. But in microalbinuria group, we have found that moderate type of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy was present. And severe retinopathy was present in a microalbinuria group. And we have also uh, to, uh, done the NCV. And we have found out that uh, around 35% uh, in A, uh, A1 category. And around A3 category, we have found 68% of patient had sensory motor neuropathy. So concluding to the, this result finding, so it is very important nowadays to rule out the patients of diabetes with any kind of uh, diabetic kidney disease initially so they, that we can prevent the patient get landing up into CKD. So while albinuria is considered as the gold standard for diagnosing diabetic kidney disease and remains the strongest predictor for mortality in diabetes and it does not detect almost the half of the patient with the diabetes that progress to diabetic kidney disease with least remains normal albinuric. And this study was attempted to stratify the risk for renal disease progression according to albinuria as well as according to the values of EGFR as well. This cross-sectional observational study also showed that alongside with the albinuria excretion, EGFR may also be helpful to predicting the worsening renal function in the early stages of uh, normal albinuria itself and progression to later stages of albinuria in type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. Thank you.